My name is Yalini Bignasorn um, from University of Chicago. I am would like to thank the chairs for inviting me to speak on this panel of amazing speakers. I hope I can do the topic justice of what does a surgeon look like in 2020. Um, when I first got this topic, 2020 looked very different than it does now. So I will talk a little bit about um, also about navigating um, in this time of change and what that means for a surgeon in 2020. Nothing to disclose. So what does a surgeon look like in 2020? Um, so the more and more I thought about this is kind of thinking about what really, what, what shapes a surgeon and what makes a surgeon who they are and what they look like. And so I was thinking about changing factors that can impact um, what a surgeon looks like. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different things that go into it, but I broke it down into you know, these five kind of topics. Um, the individual, so what that person may bring, their background, um, who they are. Um, but it's also how you trained, um, the way you were trained, uh, the technology that's available, and how you're using that technology shapes you as a surgeon. And additionally, especially as we're talking in, in terms of this year, um, the environment and what kind of environment you're practicing in, um, what patients you're caring for and how that impacts what you look like as a surgeon. And so a few of these topics have already been talked about in some detail in this panel, so I won't go into too much detail about training and technology because we've talked a lot about how that has evolved over time and, and, and you can imagine how that's changed what the surgeon in 2020 looks like but I'll start with um, the individual and, and how that has changed over the years. And so when I was first given this topic, um, the first thing that came to my mind, which I'm sure came to many of yours, was the hashtag, I look like a surgeon um, movement. And so um, this movement, uh, as I'm sure all of you know, fed off um, the momentum that was happening around the I look like an engineer uh, movement and it was uh, focused on you know inclusion and diversity in our field of surgery getting away from the stereotype of what a surgeon should look like and really recognizing um, the diversity within our field of surgery um, whether that's um, gender race orientation um, we have a very diverse group of surgeons and um, and making sure um, and thinking about it in an inclusive way is really, I think, what this movement um, showed. And um, furthermore, you know, that continued to grow as Dr. Pitt um, had the New Yorker cover um, demonstrating that, you know, surgeon laying there may wake up and, and see four female surgeons. And I think um, this has been great for us to, to continue to focus on growing diversity within um, our surgical field, but if we take a step back, I think if we really look at what surgeons look like in 2020 and state us a little bit, a few years older, I think we still have a ways to go. And so this is from 2017, but the, the number of active physicians who are female uh, in general surgery is still only 21%. Um, not far ahead of gastroenterology, which is um, a whopping 18% of, of uh, are females. And so um, I think it's great to celebrate our diversity, but we also have to know that we still have a ways to go. And similarly, if we look at underrepresented in medicine, let me see if I can move this. Um, this is data from general surgery residency programs, again, a couple years old. Um, but if we um, look at underrepresented, up underrepresented in, um, in medicine, you know, away from, talking away from gender, but more on race and ethnicity, we still, we still have quite a ways to go. And so talking about all of this in the current um, time period is actually quite relevant. I mean, obviously this year, uh, there's been a lot of emphasis on diversity and inclusion. And I and a lot of leadership within surgery and all of our societies understand that this is a priority that we are still um, behind and that we need to make 
conscious and active efforts to to grow diversity within our fields and and we all know that increasing diversity in the workplace increases innovation and, and advancement and being in a field of uh, always being on the edge of advancement you know in minimally invasive surgery and stages it's important for us to continue to grow our diversity so that we can continue innovation moving forward. But I think it's important to think about um, inclusion, not only in the traditional ways that we talk about in the workplace, but when we talk about surgery and minimally invasive surgery, it's also important to think about inclusion in the technical aspects. And so one thing that you know has always bothered me as a female surgeon is that a lot of the design of laparoscopy has not been remodeled. And it, it's been based upon, um, upon a man's glove size of seven and a half and eight. And a lot of this has not been redesigned. We know there's been several groups that have shown that um, females and surgeons with smaller hands are more prone to injuries. Um, and this is likely due to the instrument design and how we train our surgeons. And so whether that's you have a shorter resident and you make sure they know that they need two or three steps in the operating room to operate comfortably or understand that somebody with smaller hands probably has to use the instruments differently. Um, but I think as a society in a field, we need to continue to think about these things. How can we become more inclusive of other um, types of people, um, other sizes and shapes. Um, everyone isn't made the same. And if we're gonna be inclusive and increase our diversity, we have to um, make sure we can accommodate everyone. Um, so this is a whole nother topic, but um, just a, a little snapshot of that. So going back to you know the factors that shape a surgeon, especially in 2020, um, talking about the environment we're practicing and the patients that we're caring for and what they're expecting. Well, in the last few months, there's been quite a bit of change. Um, I know I'm using the New Yorker covers a lot here, but I think in the last few months, it kind of demonstrates what's been going on in our society and, and the environment we're practicing in. And so with everything that's happened, um, we have to navigate this differently. And so how are we navigating a world that's reshaped by COVID-19? Um, obviously the social distancing practices um, and decreasing risk of transmission has changed the way we're practicing. I know early on, a lot of us had pressures on um, how we were gonna prioritize healthcare and resources, uh, differentiating between elective and non-elective procedures and really trying to get away from that um, terminology because as we all know many of us um, do procedures that may be considered elective but trying to think about them as medically necessary or time sensitive procedures and understanding who um, can have um, a surgery with less resources perhaps reducing hospital stays to reduce our patients risks to COVID and and discharges facilities all new um, concepts we had to think of in a different environment with the, the COVID-19 virus. Additionally, you know, telemedicine has really um, revolutionized how we are developing healthcare. And so um, at, many of us are learning that this has actually been a great um, implementation into our healthcare delivery. It's become more convenient for patients, it's more convenient for physicians. Um, but it has changed the way we bill for patients and how we evaluate the process. But, you know, it's becoming more and more clear that telemedicine is not going to go away, um, even um, as we um, have better control of the pandemic. Telemedicine is here to stay. And so I think a surgeon in 2020 really has to understand how to navigate this and how to change the way they practice. Additionally, when we're talking about this, patients. Um, it's all about convenience. Even before the pandemic, you, you know, patients wanted to be one click away from everything. This immediate engagement and convenience, just like ordering something off of Amazon or, or ordering a ride share it had to, you know, this immediate engagement and responsiveness um, has translated into medicine. And so that means a surgeon these days has to be 
they're engaged with all the electronic communication, whether that's with other with patients, other referring physicians, um, staff, being able to be easily accessible through these electronic um, platforms. And so we talked about this, uh, some of the other panelists have talked about this too, but um, you know, at University of Chicago, we engage in Facebook. These are some examples from our institution on Facebook and Instagram. It's a way for us to engage to pay with patients and patients to engage with us. And it's just a very important part of practice these days. And so what a surgeon looks like in 2020, it's no longer going to be paper charting and letters and, you know, um, all of this. It's going to be electronic. We're going to be, everything is moving towards um, the EMR system, electronic communication, even um, evaluations now. We're moving away from that physical connection that we have with patients in the office into um, the telemedicine um, arena. And so I'll end with this slide about what a surgeon looks like in 2020. This is our chief resident class this year on the left side of the screen. Um, and you know, on the right side was my graduating, was all our residents in our program. Um, we are we are increasing in terms of diversity and inclusion, and I think Stages is a great place for that because Stages understands the importance of diversity and how that impacts innovation and advancement in the field. And I think um, we still have a ways to go, but I think we're making good progress. And um, it's not just about uh, how the diff how you look or the shapes and colors of our or gender of our um, surgeons, but also where they come from and their experiences and, and being inclusive of, of everything. And so I think um, what a surgeon looks like in 2020 could mean a lot of different things, but it's, it's great. So thank you for uh, this opportunity and uh, we are hashtag, we are sages. <laughs>